Well, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to DEF CON again. Uh, we're glad to see you all up this morning. And uh, my name is Mark Tobias. This is Tobias Blues Manis, my partner. And hopefully they'll get our audio problems dealt with. And <laughs> and our hey, okay, okay. So we got video on both screens. Right, no teleprompter, but the president's not here either. <laughs> so uh, Toby and I uh, work for uh, Security Labs, which is in our uh, office, and we work for a number of major lock companies in the world. We uh, have a team that analyzes mainly high security locks with some consumer level products as well uh, for security vulnerabilities, mainly for covert entry. So a few years ago at DEF CON, uh, we talked about a number of different consumer level locks, but not really in detail. And as a result of that, we ended up filing a complaint with one of the standards organizations about the lock we're going to talk about today. And we figured a couple years would go by, some things would occur, maybe the problems would be remedied, but they weren't. So today we're now the monitor went away here, but I guess we're okay. Okay. Uh, I got yeah. It. okay. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about one of the most popular consumer level mechanical cylinders in the United States. And, uh, and the problems, the design problems that we found. How many of you guys have this lock on your doors? Ooh. <laughs> so everybody knows what this is. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is probably in the United States, there's, there's really two major consumer level brands in the United States. This is one of them. And, th and they're in every DIY store, hardware store. And a lot of folks believe that these are really secure. And in many ways they are. The problem is, as we'll point out to you, uh, in critical ways they're not. So we're going to go through, we've done a pretty detailed slide presentation and uh, with a lot of graphics and animation that we hope you guys enjoy uh, to detail the problems. Um, and we recognize that a lot of folks can't afford high security cylinders that are $7,500, $150 a piece. We do understand that. And I guess some, some locks is better than no locks on your door, but uh, there, there's also a false sense of security that these kind of locks provide a higher level of security than they do, and that's also enhanced by packaging and marketing statements by the manufacturers, especially with regard to the uh, Builders Hardware Manufacturers Association standard uh, for it's a consumer commercial level standard that has much more to do with endurance and durability than security, and that's the case in this lock. So quick sets are really easy to understand. Today we're going to talk about their smart key versus conventional pin tumbler locks and a number of ways that we've determined to open them very rapidly and that present some serious vulnerabilities. Now you'll notice that the lock on the uh, left hand side of the screen, that's a smart key because it's got a little slot to the left of the keyway. That means that it's a reprogrammable lock. So what we're going to do is begin this morning letting you listen to a couple pieces of audio. We called customer service repeatedly to ask them how secure their locks were as if we were going to buy some. And we wanted to set the stage because this, either these folks aren't trained properly or they're making statements that they shouldn't be making. So either way, we thought you would enjoy the questions. These are about two minute clips each. Uh, and nothing's been edited out that was relevant. Uh, only the chit chat between us, but these I tried to edit out to the relevant statement. So this first one was on in June of this year with Brian. Clickset, this is Brian. Can I help you? Say a couple of questions on smart key. Okay. So my only concern is is Quickset comfortable and 
basically debunk this that there's no way to stick a screwdriver you know just a common tool into the lock and open it no that that'd be a negative um i mean if that w- if it was that easy to pick to, to pick a quick seat lo- uh, quick set lock um they would be having us you know do recalls okay if this customer's got this unit you get a call tag have a prepaid label sent out and send that back to our quality control there's nothing like that it's, it's business as usual is there any to are you guys aware of been trained any tools out there that will open these, or is this just all nonsense? No, without the actual key for the unit itself, no. You can't open it. No, so as far, just so I can tell my boss, as far as Quickset is concerned, other than drilling these, if you don't have the key, you're not going to get in. No. And that's the bottom line. And sticking anything foreign inside of the keyway is just going to make it that much harder to open up. Okay, so it, it, uh, basically what you're telling me is it isn't going to happen. You can sabotage the keyway, which will... Yeah, but... It- okay, so that was, that was Brian. Okay, so you're starting to get the picture. So this is Satima. Well, Instra, how can I help you? Uh, are you tech support? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, we're looking at buying a large amount of your smart key cylinders. Mm-hmm. I have some questions. Sure, go ahead. Are you technical? Yes. Oh, okay. How about forced entry? How difficult are they? Like, the old locks, you could, like, take a screwdriver and put a lot of pressure yeah, on them. Yeah, same thing, same thing with these. I mean, you can line up the springs. That's what the screwdriver would, would do. Right, force the springs to um, align and open the lock. With these ones, you can't even put a flathead screwdriver in there. You can't. You can't. No, because there's spring. With there's racks, we call them. Okay. They're coming from up and down, you know, uh, up and down direction, okay. not just up. Okay. So, so this stuff on the internet's not true. That um, you can stick a screwdriver in them and open them. No, no. We were aware of that video, um, and, you know, we've, we found out about it, but they did something else before they, they showed that video. Um, that's what it was. I believe that's what I heard, that it was um, they had to do something else to the cylinder, and then they recorded the video with just using a flathead screwdriver and opening it. That's not how it works. So if somebody walks up to a lock on one of our apartments, uh-huh. Unless they can take that lock apart, you're telling me they can't open it without the That's right That's correct, key. Right. Is there any quick way of forcing these open? No. That a burglar could do, like in 30 seconds, you know, no. 15 seconds? Is there anything that you guys have been trained on or aware of? Oh, no. No, no, no. Not Nothing a, like that. There's no tool that you can just put in the cylinder and pop it open. There isn't. There's no emergency key that you can, or we send you, that will open it. Nothing like that. What to say with all, I mean, how, how long have you been with Quickset dealing with these? Um, four years. Let's just take a four-inch or a six-inch screwdriver, which everybody has mm-hmm. in their kitchen drawer, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and you stick it in the lock, and you take a pair of pliers or a vice grips, and, and you turn it. Can you open the lock? No. Well, of what about sticking a wire through the where the key goes in or any other way? Now, don't jump the, ahead of yourself. No. There's no you can't way. put it at the wire or anything like that. You cannot. <laughs> yeah, no, right? you cannot. Okay, so you wouldn't worry about putting these to protect valuables, to, you know, to protect your house or your apartment? Not at all. Okay, so that's what the public is told if you call in and want to know if these locks are secure. So unfortunately, and and, and I don't think there's any malice on the part of their employees, they just don't know. They have not been educated. There was plenty of stuff on the net a couple years ago that they referred to, and I just don't think they know, or they've been told not to say it. We don't know. So the reality is, as, as we can see from the show of hands, there's millions of these locks used in America, homes, apartments, businesses. They're inexpensive. The cylinders run $20 to $30, maybe $40 a piece. Um, there's, they have pin tumbler models and they have smart key models. They have deadbolts and they also have electronic cylinders. So it is one of the most popular locks in America. 
and they've been in business actually for about 60 years. Uh, and again, they have a very diversified product line. Um, these are some of their distribution channels, as you recognize Home Depots, Lowe's, uh, Ace Hardware, lots of folks are carrying these locks. And mainly they're sold through DIY channels, the do-it-yourself channels rather than the locksmiths. Um, a lot of locksmiths actually don't care for these cylinders because it circumvents their revenue and their low quality locks. And this is a shot, I think, from uh, Home Depot. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're very, very prevalent. They've got great marketing. Uh, they're in residential and apartment facilities. So um, Quickset, Wiser, Baldwin, the basics. Toby? No, keep going. All right. This, this one, uh, we're, we're talking about pin tumbler locks, which is their older version, and smart key. Smart key will show you the difference. In some ways, it is a very clever lock. The pin tumbler locks they sell are five or six pin. Uh, the smart key is five pin. The smart key, there's some attributes that the pin tumbler locks don't have as far as security. The pin tumbler locks, uh, if some of you guys were around several years ago, we had a little 11 year old Jenna Lynn bumping them open. <laughs> Y'all remember Jenna Lynn? She's probably in college now. Uh, but she became a YouTube star. Um, a little girl in one minute figured out how to open these locks. Whack, whack, they're open. Um, the problem is they all have the same keyway. Uh, there's no duplication protection. There's no key control protection. These are definitely not for high security installations. They're mainly residential and apartments. So uh, quick set history, as I said, they've been around about 60 years. They're very easily compromised. And th the smart key actually was introduced around 2008. Uh, but uh, probably a lot of you folks still have pin tumbler locks. Um, you probably wouldn't know the difference unless you look at the little slot, the right hand photograph, the little slot to the left of the keyway, that indicates quick set. Uh, but it's the same key that will open these locks. So here's the difference. On the left is a pin tumbler where we, it's a conventional lock with two pins and a spring in each chamber. On the right hand side is smart key. It's much more complicated design, but same key, you'll open it. Yeah. And actually, is your uh, yeah. you can see also that what they share is the same key. What Quickset did with this design is trying to use the same key for their uh, locks. So you have one that is a pin tumbler design, and the other one that you can reprogram and um, supposedly be more secure. You cannot bump, you cannot pick pick open the lock, you can probably uh, other attacks like uh, <clears throat> impression in the key, you cannot do that with Quixit. But on, on the trade-off, we find ways more easy to open this uh, Quixit lock. Okay, so pin tumbler design, they're, they're essentially not secure unless they're a high security lock with a, a number of added on attributes. Pin tumbler locks essentially in this category are easy to pick, easy to bump open, easy to impression. Uh, they're easy to mechanically bypass. They can be master keyed. Uh, and it's also fairly easy to determine what the top level master key is. And there's limited number of combinations. And these locks are fairly low tolerance locks. Mm -hmm. So there are many fewer keys that in the universe of keys that will open these locks. So the pin tumbler lock, okay. go ahead. Okay, so we're going to go first how, how a pin tumbler uh, cylinder works, okay? In this case, we have uh, a quick set cylinder. This is what you see from the outside. And the parts, we, we have a shell of, that is the outside portion, the plug, and the key slot where, where you put the key. That's what mainly more, more people know about the lock. So what is inside is a, a pin stack. You have a spring a, a, a series of, of pin tumblers and you have a shear line. That shear line is where you have to move the pin stack in order to create and, and uh, a clear se surface. Separate those pins in order for the lock to turn. 
Okay, so that's the basics of, of, of a pin tomber. You have to get that pin on shear line, depending on the height of the key, so you can uh, unlock the cylinder. Now, that's one pin. On, on, on a regular uh, pin tomber, you have more than, than one pin. You have, five, in this case, five pins, different heights on, on, on the bottom pin, which is the portion that fits the key. So when you put the key, you see all the bottom uh, pins line up with the cylinder. So that cylinder can turn if the uh, matching pins match the, the key. So if you put a wrong key, what you have is some pins either extend to the plug or some pin from the blo top blocking the rotation of that pin. It's a very simple design, has been for many, many years. And uh, most manufacturers work around this design, adding sidebars, uh, third levels of, of uh, uh, locking devices. But it's the most common uh, element. Are we okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that's what is inside on, on, on a regular pin tumbler. And uh, and we said uh, the smart key is not uh, a, a, a pin tumbler lock. If you look inside, there's very different components that will make that lock be able to reprogram the lock to any specific key and to make it more secure against bumping and picking and, and some sort of uh, impressioning with uh, techniques. Okay, so this is what the inside of a smart key looks like, and we'll blow this up in just a minute. But this is a sidebar based lock, which means that it's a different locking mechanism that keeps the plug where you stick the key into from turning. And this design actually was developed in 1978. Uh, the original design here was in over a million hotel rooms. Uh, because it allowed, it was the first real programmable lock. Very, very clever. And then it was improved by a company in Italy uh, called Rialda, and then Quickset took the Rialda design and modified it for the consumer market in the United States. So attributes of smart key. It's only a five pin lock. And when we say pins, they're really not pins. They're sliders. And there's a really big difference. Pins mechanically and physically are secure against torque and forced attack. The sliders in these locks are not quite so secure. In this lock, there's one sidebar that really provides the entire security of this lock. They are extremely pick resistant. Uh, there's an underwriter's laboratory standard 437. Uh, which defines uh, picking for commercial and high security locks. Quickset actually meets this standard. That means they, these cannot be picked in under 10 minutes. They are very, very pick resistant. And they also cannot be bumped, period, because there's no pin tumblers. These are sliders, and so there's nothing to bump open, uh, to, to, which, which in a way, as we refer to this lock, it's one of the most secure, insecure locks in America. <laughs> now, obviously, those are opposite ends of, uh, of the spectrum, but that's what it is because from the picking standpoint, from the impressioning standpoint, from the bumping standpoint, you're essentially not going to open them. The problem is that's trumped by other ways that we'll show you. The other really cool thing, how many of you guys have smart key versus the old pin tumblers? Or do you know? Oh, so not that many. Okay, well, smart key, they're actually backwards compatible. Smart key, you can instantly reprogram them without a locksmith. You stick the correct key into the lock, turn it about 30 degrees, pull it out, stick a new key in, turn it back to 12 o'clock. That lock is reprogrammed with a new combination. It is a very, very clever and desirable option in the marketplace. But there's a lot of security trade offs to get there. No, definitely. We have to also understand that the space that they have to, to work uh, is, is always the same. So to put all these uh, different attributes in, in a lock, it, it, 
it becomes uh, a very difficult difficult task to do. Okay, so, and the other attributes, it has one primary keyway everywhere, which is really a problem because it's easy to make keys or duplicate keys. There is no key control. Now, they make a special deadbolt lock for master keying, limited master keying for like apartment houses that we'll show you. The problem, and they think that that key cannot be duplicated easily. We'll show you how that happens. Okay, Toby, you want to do this one? Yeah, okay. So we show you at the beginning how a pink tumbler uh, lock works, and this is the uh, smart key. The first thing that you notice from the outside is that little slot on, on the side. That's to uh, change the combination when you follow the, the right uh, procedure. So, um, uh, we told you that on the inside, it's totally different. Uh, this lock is based on a sidebar uh, design. You see a pin, you see a, a slider on, on, uh, next to the pin and the sidebar. And the sidebar is the pur in purple. So when we put torque on, on that cylinder, the sidebar try, try to retract, but it's blocked by the, that slider. So in order for that lock to open, the pin has to move the slider to the right height so the sidebar can enter uh, the groove of the slider and the lock can be open. So that's the principle of, of the smart key uh, as far as the uh, slider uh, sidebar combination. So and the the way that they can make the different combinations is the way that they fit the pin to the slider with uh, these different channels. The side the slider is staying at the same position, the sidebar at the same position, but the pin configuration, pin slider changes for the different depths from one through six. Yeah, the relationship between the pin tumbler on the right hand side and the yellow slider those separate in reprogramming mode so that they index to one of the six different little teeth on the slider and then they bring it back together. That's how the combination has changed in this lock. Go ahead, Toby. And it's the same thing. It's, it's not only one pin slider combination. We have in total for, for the smart key, we have five pins and five sliders. So the sliders are the ones that sets the combination inside the, 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 the smart key cylinder. So when you put the key and the key is set to that combination, you see the red dot? That's where the sidebar drops, okay? So when the sidebar drops at that combination, that lock can be open. And the pins just follow the combination of the, the key. In this case, we have two, two three, Two six three four one, which is the individual depth of, of each key. So, if we want to rekey the lock, we have to put the working key into the lock. They have an, a special tool that it will move a block in uh, uh, like a hub that house all those sliders. And what happened is that the sliders separate from the pins. So now we can remove the pins, but the pins, the sliders are at the same, uh, they're a uh, 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 shear line with, with the. Yeah, they're locked into position, so they can't go anywhere until we stick another key in. So we can put another key, that key sets to the combination of the key, and then, then we have to bring all those sliders back to engage again to the sliders, uh, uh, the pins, so we have a new key working for this uh, lock. So it's a very clever design and they have uh, uh, a ball bearing so to prevent also. Uh, yeah, keep going. Okay, so these are the components that, let's see, okay. So this, this shows the, the five pin tumblers that the key responds to. These are locked together to make this lock work. So, and the two bottom pieces are the sidebars that actually stop that plug from turning. And this is what 
the plug looks like. Yeah, it's, it's their, their pins are like hollow, so you can put the pins, they have a cover, so you see the taps where the sliders goes, and you have that hub that, oh, that puts the, the slider together with the, the, the sidebar. Okay. So can, now, and now let's talk about master key systems before we get to the attacks. So in conventional master key systems and pin tumbler locks, we have one key that can open many locks. And there's potentially many different levels of keying because we have an extra pin in each chamber. Uh, and that creates a whole bunch of different shear lines. Conventional locks are expensive to rekey. You have to have a locksmith do it. And there's also what we call incidental master keys. There's a lot of keys that will open a master keyed cylinder that really aren't intended. And that's a problem. And that's a problem. Um, um, well, well, actually what happened with master key system, that those in unintended keys, they try to use those uh, to, to work in, in the system. So it depends how the people who's doing the, the master key, but you have more than two keys working on the system. We're going to show pretty much how, how a master key system So, works. and as we pointed out many years ago, conventional master key systems, if they're not high security, they can be also easily compromised, but in a different way, so we can figure out what the top level master keys is in the system. So remember the pin tumbler lock, and then it has one pin, um, the spring, top pin, bottom pin. Now we have a, another pin between the top and the bottom. So what happened that we are, oh, that we are creating two shear lines. You see, right there we can split the pin and the lock opens. We have one depth for that pin, but it's also another shear line. So we have two depths that opens in, in that specific chamber. But again, if this is not, a lock is not one pin, so we, for this example, we put another split uh, pin, we put a master, that's called a master, uh, uh, wafer the middle the pin. So and the rest will 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 left the 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 pins like, like that. So we have a key a that makes the shear line. So that key will open the cylinder. We we also have a B key that can open that cylinder. So the, those were the two intended keys when we are making a master key system. And we have to understand also that when people say that I have a master key, uh, there's no such thing that as uh, a master key for a GM car. You have to set a master key system. In a pin tumbler lock, when somebody said I have a master key, the system is set to work with, with this uh, 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 master wafers in order to set the system to open uh, different different locks. Okay. So the problem is now that we have two unintended keys, key C and key B, that will also open that lock. And if we add more uh, master wafers, that number is going to increase. It's, it's an exponential number. And in some cases, depending on the person who's doing the job, they can put in even more uh, uh, massive wafers, and that creates uh, many, many coincidental it, keys, it, and they're not secure. And it can also make the lock a lot easier to pick. The other problem with Quixit, for example, is the keyway is so common, they, and they have so many different uh, individual keys that they can use that probably your home key, if you have an, uh, uh, a commercial facility that has been rekeyed and uh, has a master key system, is potentially uh, that one of your keys can open one or more of those locks. Okay, so Quickset came up with what they call key control, which is actually, it's, a, it's basically a one level master key system. There's two cores in one cylinder. It's, it's actually a clever system for apartment houses where you only need one level of master keys. There's two separate keyways, supposedly, that are secure. 
that one won't go into the other. So the apartment user, the apartment tenant has one key, their change key, and the management has a key that will open the other core in the lock, okay? It's actually very clever. No locksmith is required. You can instantly change your master key systems. There are 46,000 theoretical combinations. Uh, they're good for facilities that need a very limited kind of system. So actually it's a very clever system. However, it's got the same security vulnerabilities as the single lock. So, and again, they can be instantly reprogrammed. So, and you do not have the cross key pro problem in the quick set system that you have on conventional master key systems. It doesn't exist. So the problem is they can also be compromised in 15 seconds. So security, what you get is what you pay for. Does anybody expect a 20 to $30 lock, $40 lock, to actually be secure? And that's the question. And again, we understand that a lot of folks can't un afford high security locks. But we also believe that the public has a right to understand so they can make the decision knowingly and intelligently whether they'll accept the risk. So as we say, there's millions of facilities that can be at risk here. So, and there's a false sense of security as we talked about. Between the BHMA standard that says this is the highest grade of security for residential and the anti-picking, anti-bumping. So we're gonna go through, and as you heard the tech reps at Quickset say, there's no way to get into these locks you have to if you don't have the key or you gotta drill them and destroy them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so smart key design issues. The problem is with the sidebar and the sliders. There's only one layer of security, and our problem is these little sliders that you see, they're very fragile. And there's also maintenance problems and programmability problems and low tolerance with the lock. So we're, and the real problem is we're gonna show you in a minute, you can apply torque to these plugs and open them. So here's the attack methodology that we came up with. Try out keys, wire, th wire through the keyway, visually reading the sidebar and the slider positions, torque the plug, replicating key control, and decoding of the master key. Other than that, they're very, very secure locks. <laughs> okay, so first of all, try out keys. Pro probably most of you guys aren't old enough to remember in the 60s, we had 64 keys that would open all General Motors cars. 64. Because we split the difference, we, we exploited the tolerance in the locks. You know, I'm talking that there is no such thing as a master key system yeah. for GMs, and you say that. Well, they're, tri they're not master key, they're tryout keys. You jiggle okay. them in the keyway, okay? Sometimes they would open most of the time. But what you're doing is cutting the tolerance in half. And the same thing in quick set. So basically, with six depths in a quick set, most of the time we can make three depths equal six depths. So here is a graphic, the six depths on a quick set key, one, two, three, four, five, six cuts. This is a depth increment key of one, one and a half and two, three, three and a half and four, five, five and a half and six. So what we're, we're, um, we didn't do this, it, this is something that we test on, on, on their, their smart key. This is an old, old, old type of, of, of attack. Try to split the difference between one cut and yeah. the other one. So, because the tolerances, you need tolerances for this lock to work. Yeah. So the next problem has always been their problem and it's called the tailpiece design. And this is the linkage when you insert the key into the plug, the plug has to talk to the bolt or the latch to communicate the energy to withdraw or lock the bolt. So with quick set, this is hollow on one side. It's, it's square and it's hollow so it'll interface on both sides of the door together through the bolt. So this is a huge problem. So this is one of the attacks that we developed on one of their older uh, key and knob cylinders. This is a special key that we made on the bottom that if we knock out the piece at the end of the keyway so there's a slot, we can go right through that and open the lock. So, Let's keep that. should we run it? No. Okay. So 
if you stick that in, in literally in five seconds, this key and knob lock is open. This is another design, Toby. Yeah, this is an old design and actually this is a pin tomber lock. They share the same uh, uh, configuration but the back was covered by uh, like 20,000 of an inch thick of brass. So we were just piercing that with, the, with an old uh, quick set key that you can get anywhere and we put an, a, a piece of wire that it was bent to accommodate the this one. Okay, so this is the newer design. This is on the quick set smart key, okay, and we're gonna show how how easy can we can access the tailpiece and pierce the. You the tell us whether you think this is ah, come on, whether you think this is secure. Where's our okay? This attack uh, on the tailpiece of the uh, quick set smart key and earlier cylinders is based on the design of the tailpiece by quick set. It's hollow and it's square which allows us to pierce the cap at the end of the plug and insert a wire that's been formed to catch the edges of the uh, tailpiece and turn it. Okay, the first thing is to introduce the tool like a regular key. I'm gonna put tension, and that tension is gonna make the sidebar uh, block the slider so I can remove the tool. And the reason is I need to put the tool backwards so we can start piercing from the top. That's the complicated part. <laughs> yeah. It's just a sharp piece of metal. Yeah, that's the complicated part. Now yeah. it's a matter of so you can see the back, the back on one side. And the seat is it's just That's it. So and this is a complicated part that you have yeah, to Yeah, you have to use the pliers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I let him do it. Okay, this is You know, I always works. get the complicated parts. So. <laughs> and now we have an opening for a wire. So now we can access the access tailpiece that, to that the is tailpiece. attached to that, that, that. And right here, you see, I'm, uh, I'm moving the, keep going because. Uh, yeah, so. and that's it. And that'll open the lock. So, and the. So that's it, you put this. <laughs> and the lock, there's no damage to the lock. Your key still works. So how many of you, how many of you still trust your door locks? <laughs> okay, next one. Visual decoding, we, and we didn't show this, but we'll tell you, you can actually take a little um, mirror, insert it into the lock, it takes a little more talent, and you can read the position of each of the sliders. Okay, here's the really good one. This is, as I told Toby, let's just label the slide torqued off. So this is torquing the plug. And we actually filed a complaint with the Builders Hardware Manufacturers Association a couple years ago. It was essentially ignored that we didn't think this lock should be certified as a grade one lock. This is the entire security of this lock as far as we're concerned. These are sliders, as you saw in the diagrams. The one on the left is normal. The one on the right has been warped. You can see it's not straight. Okay, and this is also what happens when you stick a screwdriver into the plug of the lock. Again, it's warped, the geometry changes. Yeah, you know, we, we said that the lock is gonna be as secure as his weakest link. Yep. And, and if the material is not strong enough, that's, 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 that's the end of it. We also did some, ran some tests and we were able to torque this lock at 112 pound force inches. The standard actually requires 300, but their argument was, well, yeah, but you're either sticking a paper clip or a piece of key, a broken off piece of key into the keyway. Okay, Toby, there, there is go, one here. element that, yeah. The, there's one element that uh, on, on, on the cylinder that when we torque the plug, we have to introduce uh, a piece of key wire because we need to, to lift that slider 
that is blocking uh, through the, uh, the housing because there's three different depths, depth, depth one, like the depth two, and the depth three that it will block, the, the physical slider will block the rotation for that, uh, for that pin. But there is an, a specific position, and it doesn't matter which depth is set the slider, the slider is gonna get inside the, the plug, so the, uh, the, the only prevent, uh, element preventing the cylinder for opening is the, the slide. Okay, the, the so slide. here's what happens. Attack, uh, based on the slider design here's the audio. Of the, uh, that smart key, uh, we can so that's the smart key. We just need to the, uh, that is specific hide, and um, uh, we're using we're a piece of uh, 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 paper clip. The uh, sliders to a specific height. We just that, that's also the complicated part. And, uh, and of course, uh, I did that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, with a uh, very short screw. So this is just a standard little screwdriver. We just seat it into the keyway. You really don't have to bang on it. This is a very small vice grip. This is your door on your house. You see it's already turned. Uh, you can see the, the block is already turned. Okay. <laughs> and once it's that, you know, those sliders bend, the, the plug compresses. So now the cylinder can go back and forth. Uh, there's no real yeah, now you have to put that piece there and that's the reason why they pass the the the, the so test on, on uh, the certification side, because when they test for this lock they put the screwdriver they torque it they say it's hey. open but the cylinder is open right now okay same problem no key control plastic keys okay this is very impressive That's a master car. No, that's Chase. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't know. So then we figured out how to decode the lock because we're going to run out of time. Um, so basically there's a procedure that we can take six different keys and we can figure out how, how to decode it. Those are the depths of, of, uh, of, of each pin. But now if we notice that sidebar it really doesn't do not engage on 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 the uh, false gate. So we dis, uh, design one uh, a key that can move. Um, um, basically, what, what we're gonna see, you're gonna see here in this video is that if we can remove the key from the cylinder with a specific depth, that is an indication that. That depth, we are have the code. The, the, the so the code. I, I don't think we have time to run this video. What? But these are the six keys. Let me just do part of this. Okay, okay this is going to be decoding the uh, control cylinder on a quick set. This is the problem uh, with their master got, key. Uh, depth analysis keys, uh, depth probing keys for each of the six steps uh, that we're going to probe in rapid order and determine the, uh, essentially the gate positions on each of the uh, sliders. So let's start with number six. We just have to put the key in, put a little bit of torque, and try to remove the key. So if we cannot remove six. the key, it's an indication that that thing is not set for that depth. Okay, so that's so number basically five. we go through and probe each the of the six position. sliders. Can be removed. And then once that's we figure out the code, the we code generate a for key for it in like so 10 seconds. Second so we go pin by pin. We just six. put the key in that position, try to remove it. If it can be removed, we uh, record the number that, uh, that we're using five. to. Yeah. And so basically, Toby goes through, decodes the entire lock, creates a key for it. So making the control key as we'll wrap this up, this is 
their master key scheme. Yeah, this is the way that Quickset uh, takes the approach for uh, the uh, master key system. Uh, this is the what they call the uh, the key it's control. Not it's, it's not playing. No, it's not playing. Uh, okay. It's not playing. Um, go ahead. So that cylinder has another cylinder on top. So that that's the scheme that they use. It's, it's two cylinders because their their platform now is so small that they decided, well, I can have one key for uh, a, a, a renters and one key for, for the user. thing is they're so close. And all these attack also uh, can be performed on, on their, their, their lock that we thought, well, this is not secure. It's even more insecure because you don't see the, the cylinder is on top. That, that uh, the cover has to turn so you can expose the, 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 the other cylinder. So if you torque the plug or you pierce the plug, you're never going to notice. And that's something that you as a, a consumer should, should know that they, they. Yeah, here's the bottom line as we'll sum up. This is a very clever design lock in certain respects, but it's also extremely insecure in certain respects. And so there's really a trade off, and you need to understand when you spend money on locks, it's an insurance policy. You need to understand that you really do get what you pay for, and it may look secure, but that, as we've shown you, it doesn't mean that it is. I think that wraps it up for this DEF CON this year. We thank you very much for coming, and we hope you enjoy this. Oh, well, if you have any questions, Thank you. Thank you.